Hey, how's it going? This is Aaron Hilliard with Mushroom Wonderland. Thanks for joining the video. It's an exciting time in the PNW to be foraging wild mushrooms because some of our favorites are popping up right now. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about Cantharellus formosus or the Pacific Golden Chanterelle. So if you're interested in chanterelles and in foraging wild mushrooms, we're gonna talk about how these grow, what they are, where to get them, how to prepare them, all of that coming up in this video. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us, come on. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Autumn has hit the Pacific Northwest, and today we're gonna to be doing a whole expose on golden chanterelles. I know a lot of people are out here looking for a chanterelle. So Cantharellus formosus, or the golden Pacific chanterelle. This is one of the most popular edible wild mushrooms here in the PNW. It's actually probably the most popular mushroom that grows around here. Part of the reason why chanterelles are so popular is because they grow in abundance here, and they're pretty easy to identify. There's two main types of cantharellus that grow here. That's the genus of the mushroom that we know as a chanterelle. Chanterelle is just a common name. Cantharellus formosus is the one that you can see in grocery stores. It's the most common wild edible mushroom here in the PNW. It grows from September pretty much to December. Sometimes in microhabitats, you can find them growing in the middle of summer even. And you're not gonna find chanterelles growing in the winter in the dead of winter or the spring. But keep in mind, there are microhabitats where these mushrooms can flush uh, really early in autumn all the way into December. I did a video last December when we were foraging for chanterelles in December. So it just depends on where you are, the elevation, the temperature, the things that mushrooms need to grow. If all those conditions are right, then you can find chanterelles way out of the prime season, which is actually just September, October, November, kind of the burr months is when you're gonna find Cantharellus formosus. It gets the name chanterelle from a Greek word meaning cup because the cap on the chanterelle when it's fully mature can be a bit concave, so it could collect water and look a little bit like a cup, I guess. One thing you're gonna notice about a golden chanterelle is its color, it's very gold. First time I ever picked chanterelles, my grandma told me when I was seven years old to take this bucket and head out into the woods and see if you can find some ruffly looking orange or gold mushrooms and bring them back. And I went out there for about an hour and I came back with the mushrooms that I found and I remember her eyes got so big, she was so excited because I found some awesome golden chanterelles. That night she cooked a pot roast and put the chanterelles in the gravy and I was hooked on mushroom picking ever since. If you're brand new to this, then this is a good channel for you to hit subscribe on and you can get a lot of information about foraging wild mushrooms. It's a great hobby, a great pastime, a good way to get outdoors and take your kids doing something productive, a good way to put some food on the dinner table as well. All kinds of reasons to be out here picking mushrooms. And chanterelles is one of the first mushrooms that you should get familiar with because it's easy to identify and it's all over the place. I'm out here in the second growth forest and it's the beginning of October in Western Washington, right near the Puget Sound. So let's take a look at what a chanterelle looks like in the wild. We have golden chanterelles. Another one hiding down there. I can see and they like to grow in patches. So when you find one chanterelle, there's a good chance that you're gonna find a bunch more of them. I'm gonna pluck these just to show you what they look like. Oh, this, uh, yeah, there's two of them here. So look at that. That is a freshie, right? Beautiful, and you can see the gills here. They kind of run down. They don't stop in a particular spot. So they're called decurrent. That means they run down the length of the stipe. So this is what the golden chanterelle looks like. And it's got that wavy margin and it's got those veins with the decurrent veins. This is what a cross section of a Cantharellus formosus looks like or a golden chanterelle. Very solid white in the center. This is a whole mushroom right here and you can see those decurrent veins that run down the stipe. And it's also got this really wavy margin. The edge of the cap is very wavy looking. And a distinct feature of the golden chanterelle is that it actually can peel a bit like string cheese. That's one of the features of the stem of this mushroom is that it peels like string cheese, it doesn't break. If you try to break one of these, it just kind of bends and it shreds. It comes off in all these shreds. So that is indicative of a golden chanterelle. This right here is the Cantharellus subobitis, the white chanterelle, and it looks a lot like a golden chanterelle. 
It's got the decurrent veins running down the stipe. It's got the wavy margin on the cap. There's your white chanterelle. One thing you should understand is that a chanterelle is a mycorrhizal mushroom. That means that this mushroom associates with coniferous trees here in the Pacific Northwest. There are other species of chanterelles that grow across the country and out east they can grow with deciduous trees where here in the Northwest it's always a coniferous tree. It's gonna be a fir tree or a hemlock tree. I always find them in fir and hemlock forests. They're gonna be growing where there's a lot of moss on the ground, where there's a lot of ferns and needle duff. They love all that kind of stuff. They don't like windy environments. They don't like it too warm. They don't like direct sunlight. These mushrooms fruit best at about 55 to 60 degrees, so right around September, October. Perfect temperature and moisture levels right here in the Puget Sound to really start getting a good flush of chanterelles. There's a species of chanterelles that notoriously grows in the summertime, right in July. You can find the Cantharellus roseo canis, and that is commonly known as the rainbow chanterelle. But right now, this time of year, what's growing out here is the golden chanterelle, which is Cantharellus formosus and the white chanterelle, which is Cantharellus subulbitis. And the white chanterelle typically seems to come out earliest. After the first rains in autumn is when I start to find white chanterelles and you can see them kind of peeking out from underneath the moss. They tend to be a lot more contorted and they get a lot more like pine needle duff and stuff stuck in them. Sometimes they can get really stretched out and crack and break and they're just not as pretty looking as the golden chanterelles. Once in a while, you'll find some really pretty white chanterelles and some people really love those. So the golden chanterelle, Cantharellus formosus, is gonna be popping up like crazy right now. It's been about two weeks since the first heavy rains of the season. That's just about perfect for these chanterelles. They're gonna start to emerge out from the moss. One thing I do is I get down and I look from all different angles. As chanterelles come to maturity, they get bigger. Then the margin, that is the edge of the cap, the very edge of the cap itself, really starts to undulate. It really starts to get wavy, and they get really wavy margins. It should be noted that there are a couple of lookalikes here in the forest of the PNW. Hygrophoropsis orontiaca, or the false chanterelle, and that's kind of a tongue twister. This mushroom looks a little bit like a chanterelle, except for it's got an off orange color. Notice it also can have decurrent gills, or veins running down the stem, but these ones are forked. It causes gastrointestinal upset in some people, and so it should probably be avoided. So this mushroom isn't necessarily gonna hurt you, but it's something to be aware of. It's more prone to cause gastrointestinal distress than other mushrooms. Another one of the lookalikes here is known as the woolly or the scaly chanterelle, and this is Turbinillus flocosus. And another identifying feature of the veins of this mushroom is they are also forked. The cap is very vase shaped and can have these little torn off looking scales growing on it. This is another one that can cause really bad gastric upset. Omphalotus eludens or the jack-o'-lantern mushroom is also another lookalike. These are actually more of a poisonous mushroom. Again, not probably gonna kill you, but will really make you sick. So the jack-o'-lantern mushroom out east of the Cascades is one to watch out for. We don't have that here in the PNW, so not too much to worry about. There's also a strange mutation that can happen to chanterelles known as rose comb. And rose comb is distortions or lumps and gross malformations that occur on the mushroom. Often the gills are present on the top leading to the name rose comb. The cause of this is usually contamination of the substrate with oil, diesel, or distillate fumes. If you're finding rose comb mushrooms out in the woods, I don't know, it's probably okay to eat, but keep in mind that this mutation can often be caused by fossil fuels and contaminants in the soil. Bitten. Right here, we got another one in this one. Real firm. Oh, it's two of them. Look at how pretty those are. Beauties. Very pretty. Oh, look. And there's another one. I'm gonna trap him. Pull him out. Another pretty one. Now one thing with mushrooms, if you find one, probably more because of the way the mycelium is, it's basically a big root system. Uh, they, they fruit like that. Oh, that's 
right here. This one's kind of hidden. I mean, literally under the slash pile. And there's another pretty one. So, uh, what well, do you know? Got to brush the pine needles off a little bit. Let's see. They're beautiful. Good goldies. Oh, there we are. Good little golden chanterelles. Some people pluck chanterelles and some people cut chanterelles. The National Forestry Service would ask that you cut them above ground level, although I really don't think that it matters from a mycological standpoint. Look at all these goldens popping. Golden chanterelles. A little dry. They're amazing and they're big. Holy crap, look at that. They're everywhere. Score. So these mushrooms will reproduce by means of a spore and that spore flies across the forest floor and wherever it lands, it's gonna make this mycelium. The mycelium is gonna hook up with a tree and then the mushroom is gonna sprout out of that mycelium. Then more spores will take off into the air and it repeats this cycle over and over and over. And during that cycle, a lot of wildlife, bugs and animals and insects like to eat those mushrooms as well as human beings. So we are also a part of that circle of life Let's just be respectful of the forest when we're picking them. You don't need to pick every single mushroom that you see. If there's a huge patch of them, leave a few behind for the wildlife. And the rule with the National Park Service also is that chanterelles should be a minimum of one inch around to pick them, and I think that's just a good rule of thumb. Don't be greedy. Don't be out there picking every tiny little pin, you know? Leave some for the squirrels. Let them grow up a little bit. It might not be killing that particular mycelium, but you're lessening the chances of spores creating a new mycelium farther away in the forest, or even better yet, in a forest that has been clear cut and has finally grown to an age where chanterelles can start growing there again. Also, where these stumps were cut, I also like to take some leaf duff and kind of stick it in those spots. I just want to leave no sign that I was here. There's a million different recipes for chanterelle online. You can use them in place of any mushroom anywhere and they are delicious and they have a unique flavor to them. Maybe I'll do a cooking video about chanterelles soon. Right now, that's not really the focus on this channel, although I've done a couple of cooking videos and probably before too long, there'll be a chanterelle video showing up on some way that I prepare them. And I know there's some people out there who all they're thinking about right now is getting out and picking chanterelles. So go to your nearest coniferous forest that is legal to be picking mushrooms in. Look up the guidelines for that. There's gonna be a video coming out really soon about how much you can pick and where you can pick and where it's legal and where it's illegal. So make sure you know those things before you head out to go hunting for chanterelles. So thank you for watching Mushroom Wonderland and tune back in next time for another video all about mushrooms. Peace out. Peace out.